So Boz just put out another Ask Me Anything over on Instagram, and as usual, I like to put the full thing up on my channel for all you non-Instagram users. This feels like it's coming off the back of the Mark Zuckerberg Vision Pro review, you can check that out here, and Boz goes super in-depth on the Apple Vision Pro himself. He talks about eye tracking in Quest, future hardware expectations, and also a huge UI overhaul on the roadmap for the future. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any more VR news, and please like the video so others can see it. Over to you, Boz. Sorry to have been late. I uh, was here presenting today at Facebook's campus, uh, Meadows campus. We had our annual conference for Reality Labs. We call it IRL, in real life. Half the people are here present. Some people are remote, whether you're physical or digital. It's all real life. This is a really kind of cool stage. You can see there's kind of some motion effects there, um, some autogen stuff. I got the, everyone's obsessed. They thought this was like broccoli. Got these topiaries here, like a rock over there. So yeah, I was late. We just uh, were wrapping up this conference and had a few meetings, but I uh, apologize for being late. We're going to do the questions right now. And I'm just going to sit up here on these steps and have this kind of cool thing going behind me. Honestly, battery is tough. Battery progress is just not very forthcoming. Uh, we make very, very slow and steady progress as an industry on batteries, and there's not even really a major promise of something in the, for, uh, you know, in the future. I did recently see a report that in China they were using, was it radioactive cadmium no they were using a radioactive isotope um to create like a a really long lasting like three volt battery that was very very small um but it's obviously like encased in a thing it's like don't open that case i don't think we're gonna put that on your face anytime soon so battery stuff is making slow progress um on thermal it's not big progress but there are promising things there are, are films and materials that we're constantly playing with that do a better job of diffusing heat distributing heat um, and that is something that we do invest in a bunch in our research labs and in our products. And um, so there's, I don't know if a breakthrough is probably wrong, but, but probably bigger opportunities for improvements there. Uh, people who create content deserve to be paid for that content. Um, that doesn't mean everyone who creates content wants to be paid. Sometimes they're doing it out of, uh, for art, for generosity, for passion. Um, but, you know, I think if you really want to have the best possible content, there has to be a business model there. Some of that is going to be people charging for content. That's great. We love that. And so there's certainly be worlds that will be created that people would uh, charge for. Um, and some of those will just be spaces. Some of those will be games. Some of those will be interactive. Some of those will be media. Some of those will be art. Um, but there's also, you know, a long tail of, of work that, that um, I think we, we want as consumers and we want people who make that work to be able to, or who curate that work to be able to be paid. And advertising is one way to do it. Um, and I think it's been a super effective model at bringing tremendous number of services to people around the world for free that they otherwise could not afford. So I think it's a part of it, um, but not, certainly not the only part of it. Yeah, eye tracking is one where if you look at Quest Pro, you know, certainly there's some raw cost to it and some weight to it in terms of just the extra cameras, um, the the lights that, that glint off of the eyeballs so that you can actually track the direction of the pupil and so on and so forth. Um, but the system cost is also big. So, you know, great, you've got, now you have this extra compute that's running. You have this extra processing that's happening. Um, and so the system, it's, uh, how expensive it is really depends on what you're measuring. Um, it's, a, it's a cost I expect to be reasonable over time. One thing that's interesting, worth noting is that um, doing it through our current lenses, our pancake optics, presents additional challenges relative to the more conventional optics that we've had before. Apple solves this by going through the lens, but that's why they have to have inserts and they don't support glasses and it doesn't work for all prescription types. So there's a lot of trade-offs in this space. Yes, I finally had a chance to sit down with it. Um, what would I say? Uh, so I had really high expectations for it. You know, I read all the reviews and I was fully mentally prepared to position us as like, okay, so we're the best value headset because we're you know, $3,000 cheaper. Um, and actually getting into the headset, and look, it's not totally fair because I have a lot of expertise. I've been doing this for 10 years. Or we've been doing this for 10 years. I've been doing this for seven years. So I spent a lot of time thinking about these trade-offs. As soon as I put the headset on, I can see what trade-offs they made and why they made them. And perhaps definitionally, those aren't the trade-offs I would have made. Um, I think it's way too much weight and it's distributed poorly. I find it very uncomfortable to use for long periods of time. I'm sure it's not universal. People have different face shapes and as a consequence, they carry weight differently. So it's all good, I respect that. But for me, it was profoundly uncomfortable. I also found the motion blur in there because of the persistence of the micro LED, uh, LED screen and the way they've calibrated it, I found that motion blur in the past through really distracting. And uh, I look around a lot, I guess. I don't know, <laughs> maybe that's the problem. 
Um, so I found the, the motion blur really bad. I found the weight really bad. Um, and you know, it's one of those things where I get uh, why they wanted to do the, the, the metal. It's like part of their design language, the metal and the glass, but metal and glass are not premium materials when they're on your face. The, in your hand they are, they feel nice and they react nicely, but on your face, lightness is the premium material, lightness. You know, John Carmack used to always quote um, an old aeronautical engineer when he was here. He used to say, simplicate and add more lightness. That was his, his real thesis on these things. So um, 123 grams heavier was, was tough for me. Um, I didn't, I don't, we, we have a prototype, you've seen it before, of, of, of eyesight. I think our prototype is actually better, our research prototype is better, and I still don't think it's worth the cost or weight that it adds. Um, don't get me started on, on my, the avatar they created for me. Uh, man, aged me by 30 years, and I already look old enough, man. I've looked like I was 40 since I was 18, geez. Um, now, am I being totally fair? I don't know, I'm not here to be fair. I am being honest with you. Uh, like I said, I was completely prepared to tell you how great I thought it was. And of course, there's tremendously great things about it. I'm not trying to pretend that there's not. Um, the resolution and the latency, the two things that they clearly optimized the entire system around are great. You know, it's tremendous. And when you're sitting there, when you're watching a movie, um, you're like, oh man, I get this, totally get it. Um, the integrations with their ecosystem are great. And by the way, you should be pissed. If you're an iPhone owner, you should be fucking pissed that they don't let anyone else do that. There's no reason they couldn't. There's no reason they couldn't create a program that would allow other uh, hardware developers to do those kinds of integrations. They don't do it because they want to keep you in their ecosystem and you should be furious that you paid all this money for this phone and you paid all this money for this laptop and they won't let you do it. You should be pissed. You've been had. What else? Y'all been waiting for this review. Uh, the cord. I find the cord really surprising. Uh, no, that's not true. If you're gonna have that resolution and you're gonna have that latency and you're driving the system that way, that's, you have to have a cord. So we, we actually kind of predicted that based on the specs that had leaked a year and a half earlier, and we were right. Uh, and I do find that bad. I find it really distracting. I also find the placement weird. It kind of constantly hit my ear. Um, but of course, every human face is different. I know how hard that is. We've been doing this a long time. Um, I found that surprising. I think our hand tracking is better. You know, when I was like in like Fruit Ninja and some of the other games, you could see the latency, which you really don't see with our hand tracking. And let's be honest, the fact that we ship high precision controllers is a huge advantage for us. Uh, I'm not saying we have great hand tracking, better than their hand tracking in my opinion, um, and the high precision controllers. Um, gaze is cool. Uh, you know, gaze is, is a cool thing. We've played with that a ton. We've got a couple of things that we, we use that for internally. Um, and so I, I think that that's a that's definitely a cool thing, and they did such a great job, and it, they built a lot of expense in that. Um, but I did find Nile Patel, uh, his review in The Verge, I thought was just amazing. By the way, I thought that was one of the best technology reviews I've, I've maybe ever read in terms of really getting to the nuance, the detail uh, within the feature, um, and seeing through some of the stuff. And I think his point that you know overloading your outputs with your inputs is a little complicated for us. And, and there's times it doesn't work. For example, when you're walking around, trying to use gaze as an input is nuts, which is why they don't, probably don't let you do it. Um, there's stuff that I think, you know, we can easily, there's a bunch of stuff that frankly, we do really well that I think people just don't know we do well. That's on us. We gotta tell our story better um, around screens and mixed reality and, and streaming and, and casting and these things. Um, and like, you know, media consumption. There's things that we shipped like travel mode that we are, you know, we're bringing back. I actually mentioned that before they even uh, had uh, kind of released that feature, like we, we released the headset I talked about. We've, we've been planning to bring that back. So there's things that also we're gonna bring to our headsets, which we're excited about. Okay, so in summary, what do I say? Uh, I think we have the best headset out there. I think if you wanna get a, a headset that does mixed reality, I think you should get Quest 3. Um, if, and you save yourself $3,000, sure, but I'm not just talking about the price, that's a part of it. I'm talking about the actual trade-offs they made. I'm sure every person won't agree with me. Of course they won't, that's totally fine. This is the world and this is the internet and every human face is different and every human experience is different. And people are sensitive to different things. I respect that, but I'm allowed to have my opinion and I don't think it's a homer opinion. There's lots of times where I've used our products, use competitors' products and I like the competitors' product better and I'm the first one to say it. This just isn't one of those cases. Um, but it's good for us to have them in the market. I think if you're a developer out there and you're excited about Apple Vision Pro, I'd like to interest you in a much larger user base um, and, and you can build for both. Uh, it's totally fine with us. Um, anyways, that's the take. Um, it's, a, it's a clean take for what it's worth, and, uh, but I respect all the, all the debate on it. And uh, it's all good news for, for those of us who believe in this future of spatial computing. Oh yeah, that's one last thing. On the comment about spatial computing, um, 
it's fine. <laughs> people always agonize about these words, you know, MR, VR, XR, people have really strong opinions. We have our own concepts of it. Um, you know, we use AR to mean um, an additive light display. So the so photons pass through from the world and then there's other light overlaid on top of it. We've used mixed reality to refer to pass through or reconstructed uh, light displays where you've got a camera that's processing the image and then reprojecting it into your eyes. Um, and we've used VR for fully immersive. Um, and you know, people, you can use that. It's fine. We can use whatever. <laughs> These are, this is not the battle we gotta fight. <laughs> No news to share, no. And I gotta tell you, you know, there's a lot of my questions are about, hey, what's coming next? What's the big new feature? And I'm not doing those questions and I'm telling you why, because the future's here now. I don't want us as an industry looking past where we are. I've been saying this since the Quest 3 launch. Again, this is not an AVP thing. I've been saying this since the Quest 3 launched. This was what we were targeting. Uh, and I've, I tell, we talk about this all the time in hardware. It's the third generation is the one that you want. And this was exactly right with the Quest line. This is what we've been targeting all along. We got there. This is the base. This is the feature set. Um, it's there. It's time. It's now. So I'm really I'm focusing today on my questions on the here and now. This is my, my, my by far my top. Every single thing I post on the internet now has somebody asking for access to the beta of multimodal. It's really cool. It's coming soon. I promise you we're working on it. Um, you know, you want to make sure it's a great experience for everybody. Um, so I hear you. I want you to know we're working on it. Uh, it's, it's coming soon. So I love this question. You know, for those who don't know, foveated rendering is when you have an eye tracked system like we have with the Quest Pro, like Apple Vision Pro, um, you know, you can render much higher resolution displays um, just at the fovea and save a tremendous amount of compute, an order of magnitude even of compute uh, by not rendering the area around it in such fidelity. I actually think Apple Vision Pro is a little overtuned in this. I can really experience the lack of fidelity around the fovea. I think their sweet spot is also less good than ours. Um, our uh, pancake lenses, I think, give a much larger sweet spot, much richer. And of course, our, our displays are much brighter, which I also really appreciate. Sorry, little extra notes there. Um, so if you have that eye tracking, you can foveate render. One thing that's interesting is Calculating the foveated rendering is actually itself not cheap, and you have to make sure that the, the savings you get is big enough to offset the calculations. Um, and so there's, there's a, a degree of, of um, accuracy that you need uh, to have in your eye tracking that is important there. So I think we're, as an industry, we're, we're in the ballpark of it. We're not quite there yet. I mentioned this in the previous answer, but it was never included in Quest 3. Um, some of that is for the cost and weight issues I mentioned earlier. Some of it is also because there's a design challenge when you're going to the pancake optics, which I think people who use the Quest 3 will agree is a significant uh, improvement. Um, uh, there's not the, the solution that we had for eye tracking for Quest Pro actually is, is not functional for a different optical stack. So you have to completely re-architect it. However, having said that, that it was never the case that uh, eye tracking was removed from Quest 3. Quest 3, for the price point we were trying to hit, the functionality we were trying to hit, uh, wasn't going to include it. Um, but we do believe in eye tracking long term. It's one of those things that we're definitely going to continue to, to push on and come back to. <laughs> Kenny is Mark's friend. He's Mark's friend, Kenny. Um, we, uh, you know, Kenny, one of the things that we are constantly are doing is taking these new headsets with all kinds of new features and um, putting them through the ringer and then doing demos and, and uh, you... I, there's very few people I spend more time with, actually, and me and Mark than, than Kenny. He's almost, if Mark and I are together, there's a good chance Kenny's there guiding us through the demos. So I was glad to see him get a little shout out there. Um, and I'll look at this next picture I'm gonna put up so you can get a sense of what I'm talking about. You know, it's a good question. Um, so the answer is no. The thing that actually controls how many uh, like PC windows we stream, in the case of this person, if you're using workrooms, you can put three different windows up, is mostly actually the PC you're connected to. Um, so a three is the limit right now in terms of what we've built. Um, and one of the reasons for that is, is not the technical capacity of the headset. It's actually because we saw people were adding a lot more screens and their systems were suffering. Having said that, it's probably foolish and we should work on that. I think screens is obviously one of the areas that, that we actually can do really well. We haven't told that story. We haven't made it easy enough maybe for people. Um, and so that's something that, that we're going to follow up on and spend some time on. Uh, I just can't tell you how much progress we make on that technology um, kind of half over half and, and miniaturizing it. You know, this was technology that a year ago uh, you had to be on a high powered PC, get a really professional scan to even have a chance of it looking decent. And now mobile scan, mobile hardware uh, can do it. So yeah, we're making really good progress on this. Um, we don't want to release a thing that's not of, of good enough quality, that's in the uncanny valley. Um, so, so we're getting this one right. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is something that long before um, even AVP was on the scene is something we've been looking at and spending some time on. And we have some pretty exciting designs and, and really actually reworking some of the core UI infrastructure to be able to enable um, a richer environment has been in the works for a while and, and making good progress. So the answer is yes, I don't have a timeline for you. It's not super soon, but yeah, it's on the way.